This time we're going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation. Last time uh, we talked about substrate level phosphorylation, which um, is the process uh, through which we can obtain ADPs from the transformation of a substrate to another substrate through the uh, uh, respiratory cycle. Uh, now we're going to talk about this kind of phosphorylation and from the name um, we can um, understand or conclude that we need uh, oxygen throughout this cycle. So, uh, what happens through oxidative phosphorylation is that uh, this step happens inside the mitochondria because the mitochondria are the centers of uh, energy production in the cell. So they are the organelles which are responsible to produce energy and hence uh, we have oxygen. So if we have the mitochondria like this, that will be the matrix of the mitochondria and uh, the mitochondria has two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. And the process of oxidative phosphorylation will take place around here. So we'll have, I'll draw or enlarge part of the matrix, the inner and the outer membranes, and the space between them, which is the intermembranous space. So this space around here is the intermembranous space. So if we enlarge the bit that I uh, showed you, here we would have the outer membrane and here we would have the inner membrane and that would be the mitochondrial matrix. So. Okay, on the uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria, we would have molecular structures that are built up and they, uh, together, they form something called complexes. And we would have four of these complexes. So that would be the first one, that would be the second, and then we would have a third, complex and a fourth complex. Also, we would have other molecular structures which are less uh, complicated or less complex and they cannot be considered as complexes such as coenzyme Q and cytochrome C. coenzyme Q and cytochrome C. This group of molecules all together would participate in our oxidative phosphorylation process. Now, for the oxidative phosphorylation we have to keep in mind two very important compounds. So we have NADH and FADH2. NADH and FADH2 are products of um, the um, cycles that occurs through the respiration process uh, in the uh, living organisms. NADH2, for example, will be a product of glycolysis, a product of Krebs cycle, or even beta oxidation, and so on. While FADH2 can be only produced in Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. And we have to keep that in mind and I'll show you why in a bit. So what happens is that we have our complexes. We'll start with the name of our first complex. Our first complex, uh, its name is NADH dehydrogenase. NADH dehydrogenase. So what it does is that it takes a hydrogen from NADH. So when NADH 
comes through this complex, a hydrogen will be taken out of it and it will become again NAD+. Plus. When this process happens, electrons will be uh, transported from complex 1 to 2 cytochrome to the uh, coenzyme Q, sorry, and it will go to complex 3 and they will follow this path. When this happens, a very important uh, process occurs. Now let's bear in mind that we have protons in, uh, in the uh, mitochondrial matrix and in the intermembranous space. So the protons will be pumped from the mitochondrial matrix into the um, intermembranous space. Complex 1 will pump four protons or four hydrogen atoms. Complex 3 will pump another four. And finally, complex 4 will pump two protons. So NADH will induce 10 protons to be pumped from uh, the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembranous space. So NADH has 10 protons. Now, what about if ADH2? If we look in the, at the name of the second complex, we'll find out it's called succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate is related to Krebs cycle. And when we see that, we'll see that if ADH doesn't pass on the first complex. So if ADH will go there, if ADH to the second complex, if ADH2, it will be FAD plus and also electrons will be produced and they will pass starting from here into the same pathway. So from this point, FADH2 doesn't induce the first four protons to be pumped. So it just induces four plus two which is total six protons to be pumped from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembranous space. So we have here six protons. And these numbers are very important because now we would have our last molecular structure, which is also on the inner uh, membrane of the mitochondria. Which is the ATP synthase. So this is the complex that synthesizes ADP. When it tries to synthesize ADP, it will take four protons from the intermembrane space and pump them inside again. Four protons from outside to inside. Now, this is for just one ATP. Now, let's calculate for one ATP to be produced, it needs four protons, and we have NADH inducing 10 protons to be pumped outside. So how many ATPs would NADH induce to be produced? So NADH will induce, we'll have 10 divided by 4, gives us 2.5, approximately 3 ATPs. This is why some of us learned that NADH gives us 3 ATPs, others learn 2.5. So the more uh, accurate answer would be 2.5 ATPs. Well, if ADH2 will give us 6 divided by 4, which is 1.5, approximately 2 ATPs. So this is the answer of why does NADH give us 3 ATPs and why if ADH2 give us 2 ATPs? And uh, finally, uh, last um, uh, thing to say, uh, the electrons that are uh, transported, hence the name of this process called um, the electron transport chain, the, uh, and the bit with the oxygen, 
we would have an oxygen atom and hydrogen and the electrons that are transported throughout this chain would, would finally reach this reaction helping the formation of water. So this chain would help to produce ADP molecules and to produce water molecules and um, that was the oxidative phosphorylation. I hope it was easy and clear and until the next time I thank you for watching and see you.